Hello, welcome back. So now we're going to create the materials for our interaction system. So we're going to head over to the UI Interactables Materials. You'll notice I have a texture, which you don't, which is a T underscore circular mask. That is purely used for the uh, circular load bar for our Interactables. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. Um, so let's create a material M underscore progress circle open that up in the details panel on the material domain I'm going to change that to user interface and the blend mode to translucent and the final color if you hold 4 on your keyboard and left click you'll create a uh, full vector and we can right click that and convert that to a parameter called color we're then going to connect this node up to the final color. And off of opacity, we're going to get a multiply node. You can also use M on your keyboard and left click to create one of these. Off of A, we're going to get an if. And then off of A again, we're going to go ahead and get a texture sample. With the texture sample being the T underscore circular mask. And then we're going to create three parameters. One being called alpha. And that will go straight into B. These will be set as constant, so zero, and then this one will show be one. One shall go into A is less than B. And then the zero shall go into both A is greater than and A is equal. Off of that, we're going to go for B and get a clamp with it being clamped between 0 and 1. I'm going to get a multiply node by holding M. Connect that there. This will be multiplied by 4. So in the detail panel, it calls B. We're going to set that to 4. And then subtract. With A going up to a power of three and we can duplicate this and this will go to B also. From here we're going to get a one minus X and then also a sphere gradient 2D with the result zero one going into one minus X and then we can duplicate this over and also this and this shall go into the result for radius we can bring that down here. From there, we can go ahead and off the radius, we can get an add with two new constants, well, one parameter and one constant, with the circle thickness being a parameter, and we're going to call that here circle thickness. And we're going to set that to a default value of something like 0 0.07. This can go into B, 0 uh, here, and this can be set to 0 0.4. You can mess around with these values to see what works best for you also. So this will head into the radius and we are done with this material. It's going to probably straighten these up to be nice. We can compile and save it. And I've just realized I did do a mistake. This needs to go into the red channel here. Yeah? And now it will work. <laughs> Apologies. Right, now that we've done that, we can save that and head over here and right click the material we've just made and create a material instance. I'm going to call that MI underscore progress circle. Open that one up. And here we can change multiple values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the alpha to keep that as zero. And for the color, and we want that as white. So we're just going to set these values to one. The alpha being one, two. Now we're done with the material. We can now go into the, uh, the widgets. So for the widgets, we need to create two new widgets, which we've got here. And we're going to open up the load bar. 
And this is very simple, we're just going to add a progress bar. So for that, we're going to add the image. And then under brush, we're going to set that image to the progress bar. So the progress circle am I. And we're going to have this set at the position minus 50, minus 50. Wait, let's anchor that first to the center, my bad. Minus 50, minus 50, with 100 and 100 for the size. This should work fine. Now we can go into the graph for this. And on the pre construct, you can get dynamic. Get dynamic material. This is not the one we want. <laughs> we'll get the image first. Okay. Get dynamic material. And then promote that to a variable. And this will be called material ref. Whilst I'm here, I'm also going to change the name of the image underscore zero variable, just so it's easy to understand. So we're going to go back to the design of view, click on image zero, and at the top right, we're going to rename that to progress bar hold time. Go back to the graph, and on the construct, we can go ahead and set timer by function name. And this can be set to 0 0.01. Function name being hold percentage, which we'll be creating now, and set this to looping. And then I'm going to create a function with the same name, so hold percentage. And within here, we have set scalar parameter value with the material instance. So let's grab this, set scalar parameter value. Make sure it's the right one as I just got the wrong one. And for the parameter name, on the material, we created a parameter called alpha. So we're going to be using that to drive our low bar. For the value, we're going to create a division node and promote these both to variables. The first variable, what we call the bottom push held. And then for the second, let's get the limit. So bottom push held limit. Compile that, and for the button held limit, we're going to have to make sure that's exposed on the spawn, like so. This is important, and I'll go into that next. And now we've finished with this widget. Now we can go into the next widget, which will be the message. This one's very simple, and all we're going to do for this, you can do what you want, like you can get an image if you'd like an icon for example, but for this we're just going to get a text block, type E, set the font to something like maybe like 50, and then size to content, anchor it to the center with the position all zeroed out, and then the alignment at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and that should be fine for that. Now we can go back into the gameplay interactable interactable master and where we had the create w interact load bar widget we can go ahead and grab the limit well, button push limit variable we had from earlier and connect that there if in your uh, unreal it doesn't show this yet you can go ahead and right click create widget and just go ahead and refresh nodes and it will show up. So that's that one. Now we can go ahead and go back into the update widget which we need to flex from earlier and grab the is valid node. We want to make sure that the load bar widget is indeed valid currently and not null. And then we can go and drag off of here and set the button push held time to the button push time from this class. Like so.
Now I'm going to remove load bar function, which we'll do next. And we'll go ahead and do another is valid to check if that widget is indeed valid. And we'll remove it from parent if it is indeed valid. We'll also set the load bar to null. And if it's not valid, we'll just go ahead and get in here ahead of the way. Right, that's that for the interactable master. Now we can go ahead and go into the comp like the player character. So player characters, player, third person character. And from here, we created an event uh, in the, uh, the input settings in the settings for the project earlier, uh, which is called interact. You might have named it differently. Whatever you called it in the first video, please use that. And then we're going to go and add a component called the interaction component, which we've made. Drag that out. And then call begin interaction and end interaction. We comment that as interact. and we should be fine and good to go. So next what we can do is create a child. So if we go to the interactable master, right click, create child blueprint class and call this something like BP interactable test, for example, we can open that up, add a cube, bring that a bit higher. And then in the event graph and delete everything and implement the action event. And just for testing purposes, we're going to destroy said actor. And now we can drag that into the level. So when we play, as you can see, the E works. So if we're looking at the interactable, we can see the widgets working fine. If we hold E, the load bar will appear and then we can pick it up. So before I finish, I'm going to go ahead and remember to disable the debug for the sphere trace. So if we go into the components, interaction component, and then to the line trace, we can go ahead and take this to none for the duration of the draw debug type. And that's everything for the interaction system. We'll be next looking into making a inventory to store the interactables. Um, and then we'll look into creating different items such as torches and uh, puzzle pieces for example for the game so please look out for the next video and i hope you enjoyed this have a great day bye, -bye.